good evening to everybody uh, here in Europe. Um, I'm Nathan, I'm from Belgium, and I will be representing Smart Construction here um, this evening or today. Um, quick introduction for myself. I'm, uh, I studied land surveying in Ghent um, and um, joined Komatsu in 2018 after having a first experience in a civil construction company. Um, and for the people who don't know Komatsu, Komatsu is, um, is a, a machine manufacturer within the construction uh, industry. We, uh, we are focusing on earth moving, utility and mining machines from uh, the very smallest machines to the absolute biggest um, machines in the world. Um, and uh, now what I'm going to tell you today about smart construction is actually uh, the intention of, of Komatsu to um, not only f remain focused on the on the machine industry, but also look towards um, services um, to be offered to the construction industry. And um, I joined Smart Construction as a land surveyor because um, they were really looking for that, that surveying background because of those uh, services they wanted to offer. Speaking of those services, I'll have to start with the fact that um, Komatsu is a company that has always been focused on, on innovation and technology. So as you can see on the screen, um, until recently, this was the only available geospatial product um, by Komatsu. And these were the, um, the machines with GNSS receivers, as you can see here. Uh, so GNSS, Global Navigation uh, Satellite System, of which uh, GPS is just one. And um, within Komatsu, they're called Intelligent Machine Control Excavators on the left-hand side and uh, Bulldozers on the right-hand side. And these allow operators to do semi-automated machine movements. So the bucket of an excavator and the blade of a bulldozer can follow digital design models um, whilst uh, um, being located because of the GNSS technology. Um, these kind of machines are now widely adopted and, uh, and, and, and loved for their efficiency and accuracy. But um, now, as mentioned, we um, were evolving further into the, the digitalization and we started looking into a, a broader range where Komatsu could really help our customers uh, within more sections of the job site uh, process. And by more sections, um, this slide can explain a little bit more. Typically, Komatsu was only involved within the construction um, parts of, of the complete process on a job site where this was a section where the machines were really needed. But um, for smart construction, we aim to um, cover a broader spectrum of, uh, of the job site process and then helping the customer really from the, from the bidding part, from the very start, all the way um, through planning, pre-construction, of course, still in the construction, all the way to reporting. We do that by offering a very varied range of products that can provide us data and other products that get collect these data for analysis. To check the relevance of, of these services, we went asking in the market and, and asked them what uh, their pains were and for which of them they could use some tools and insights. And the findings came out uh, were that uh, typically construction companies, they're, uh, they're having a shortage on, on personnel and hiring new profiles is very difficult. And um, there's a lot of time constraints that block companies from really implementing these new tools. And with the lack of, of production data, they, um, they really require to do in-depth analysis. So that, with that in mind, we started the idea for smart construction because these points really block them from innovating and uh, implementing new digital tools. So that's where we want to help. So on this side, we broke down the steps of uh, digital transformation to assess what consultancy we, uh, services we can still offer in order to guide mostly earthwork companies 
to move towards digital implementation. On the bottom, we see uh, the conventional machines um, where there is no digital data being gathered or used. This um, is still applicable for a lot of, of construction companies that, that don't work with these IMC machines, but also very typically what we can see is that um, construction industry is, is working with, with paper plants, um, is not using um, any tools to, uh, to, really, to really help them. So we want to, um, we want to help them. And there we can see that one step up, one step up is um, what we call the digitization um, step, where we can see an increased use of geospatial products. For example, the IMC machines, so the intelligent machines, location trackers on machines and vehicles to uh, optimize their fleet usage, but also gathering data with, with drones. Uh, GNSS survey is still applicable, but we see drones as a large uh, advantage to be given as well. And, um, and then of course the, the photogrammetry to come with it. Um, in the next step, the digitalization step is where we as smart construction uh, come really in play with the, with the dashboard. As, uh, as Dave has already shown, um, the dashboard is being worked with um, by Cesium. And this uh, section is where we will really start visualizing and using this data in, in some software portals. So having an, an easy to use platform, providing you relevant data that can actually that you can actually use for your operations and um, we hope to give added value to our customers to get rid of their uh, pains as mentioned earlier and um, then completely in the top we have a complete digital transformation where we have a completely connected job site and we can offer in-depth consultancy based on all of this uh, data gathered throughout the, uh, the complete pyramid For the, the next few slides, I will focus um, most on, on these two steps, so digitalization and digitization. And there we can offer some geospatial products, um, which is what this, this webinar is all about, of course. I will just show you a few of our offer um, and, and explain what uh, this gives to an added value and, and show what the state of construction industry is still in. The first um, product I wanted to show you is, um, is the Smart Construction Edge, which is um, the, the device you see, the piece of hardware you see on the picture on the right-hand side. And this is really designed to uh, process data captured by a drone to give a 3D view of the terrain. We see on the picture a job site, and classically this would be surveyed by, by the land surveyor with the GNSS rover or a total station as you might have seen them standing around on the, on the side of the road or even on a job site. But this brings some, um, some, some dangers and some, uh, some inherent um, workflows with them, by which I mean, for example, we see very steep um, hillsides. The, the land surveyor will t would have to walk on them in, the, in this classical way of working. So it brings, to it some kind of safety aspect that we can eliminate with, uh, with the person we see here um, as being a drone pilot. Um, as you do the classical survey, you're, um, yeah, you're, you're taking more time because the drone can do some things faster. Imagine you have to walk up this, uh, this hillside. Uh, with the drone, it, it's way faster. It, it can fly in a straight line. So, um, and another thing is that, yeah, if you're longer on a, on a job site, you're also more exposed to, to, to weather and to the elements. So um, that's where a drone can be in, in a very valid alternative. What is then this uh, product? And I have an enlargement here. Um, what is this so special about? Because we have other uh, drone companies that, uh, that offer surveys, um, if, if we would do a classic survey without using the SC Edge, we would still require a highly specific uh, computer, which is heavy um, on, on calculating power and which cannot be uh, 
or barely used whilst uh, it's rendering those uh, drone footage because the photogrammetry process is, is turning pictures into 3D point clouds, which uh, takes heavy calculation power. And there this uh, smart construction edge comes into play because um, as the name implies, what which edge is based upon is, a, is edge, edge uh, computing, which is completely the opposite of, uh, of a cloud-based solution. So this box will take uh, the pictures from the drone and will start rendering um, a 3D point cloud from, uh, from those picture without uh, having your computer um, needing to, to uh, render these things for a couple of hours. I'm going to give a very uh, slight nuance because we talk about 3D here. And for the, um, for the attentive watcher you've seen in, in this presentation as well, um, what we will use in, in Earthworks is actually more uh, 2.5D and not particularly 3D. What is the main difference? I've, I've seen the question also pop up in the chat. What we see with, um, with 3D data, you have to uh, imagine it as um, being on a construction job site which has buildings, not in our scope, but buildings. What 3D really implies is that you have for a certain X and Y coordinate, you can have multiple uh, set coordinates. So imagine you have a vertical, perfectly vertical wall. You can have multiple Z coordinates for one and the same um, X and Y coordinates. So there's a slight nuance where two and a half D can only have one Z coordinate for uh, an X and a Y um, value. So this makes a lot more sense in, in Earthworks uh, applications, of course, that you, um, you have only one um, Z value. This I'll show you a, a smart, uh, a small video about. So, oh, I'll just go one back. Here we go. Um, what we want to, to show you here as well is that we can fly the drone and that the edge is, is way faster in, in getting these, um, this 3D data into a solution, which is uh, the dashboard shown up here. And it's quite easy to use. So it, it doesn't require a, a land surveyor per se, which is something that, um, as mentioned earlier, um, job site uh, personnel is uh, sometimes hard to find, especially surveyors. Uh, when I started my, my studies as a surveyor, I really saw that um, there was a shortage on surveyors. So with this edge, we can, um, um, give an addition to, this, uh, to those land surveyors with people on the job site flying and um, it's very easy to use to start rendering. What we will use this data for um, coming out of the, the edge is um, the edge is, is producing a point cloud. It's a so two and a half D point cloud. And we will use these, uh, this two and a half D point cloud as you see an example of in the bottom. This is an example of a, of a point cloud. We will use it to fit it into our dashboard, which is a software designed to display this, uh, this, this point cloud data of the terrain and, um, and visualize and offer an opportunity to measure every aspect of the job site. For example, you see here a stockpile and then you can easily measure a stockpile where um, classically it would use specific yeah, CAT software where you would need a heavy computer as well to, to, um, to calculate some volumes. We, um, we can also import classic surveys if you want to use um, the, the, the surveys from a GNSS rover as well. And what we also are developing is uh, machine as build data. So remember the, uh, the IMC machines I've talked about. Um, Komatsu is developing um, the import of these very smart machines that they can automatically transfer the data. So they, the, the, the system will know the tracks of the machines drive around on the job site. And this can be imported within, the, um, within our, our environment. The idea with the, with the dashboard is then to fully create a digital twin that you can uh, remotely access. So um, 
with the whole of, of COVID uh, situation, we can see that remote working is uh, is very uh, applicable. And um, but this is something that that is not applicable in in, in construction industry. Um, until now, we, you have to go to the job site to see what the actual state is. And this can be solved with, uh, with the dashboard, which can uh, really give you a, a digital feel of uh, what progress is being made. What this can uh, eliminate from, from pains from people uh, in the construction industry as well, is that it, it can uh, limit the, the travel needed to go to job sites. So if you can check this from, uh, from your sofa at home on um, on any kind of computer, even on a, on a basic computer, and see what your job site status is all about, it can give a very um, big advantage. Um, and what we can see here in the picture on the top right as well, is that we included some kind of a design. So we can um, compute volumes, um, see progress charts, um, and, and make some reporting out of it, what, what is happening on the job site. When classically there was very uh, heavy on paper workflows, then um, now we can check it from the computer and do some, uh, some easy measurements and reports. And uh, the third one, I'm, uh, the, the third geospatial application I'll, I'll show you today is smart construction fleet. It's developed to, to follow and, and optimize uh, your fleet and check your machines in real time. So basically what we do is um, we use a phone application or a, or a tracking device to, to track machines and, and dump trucks. And we use it to really keep an overview of, um, of where our machines are and, and keep an overview of what's happening on our job site to really monitor it. What we can do with the data that comes out of it is that we can really check um, cycle times. So we see that, for example, um, when a truck comes in um, delivering new soil and this bulldozer has to spread the soil, imagine that if there's too few um, trucks bringing in new soil, that this uh, bulldozer will have to wait. So there is a, a lack of efficiency. So to be able to, to really follow up, we can, uh, we can provide this data to see that um, no, none of the machines will be kept waiting. If necessary, um, the job site manager could even add new machines um, if, if he's uh, invited to. Can also bring um, interesting insights to a dispatcher. Um, for example, for the trucks, where are his trucks at all time? He can see actual live location. Well, classically, they had to, to phone the drivers. They would never know where they are. Um, imagine that you have a, a highway job site, 20 kilometers. Yeah, if there's only one job site manager and you're on one um, end of a job site, you have no clue of what's happening at a completely other site. So data is really the key for optimization. Um, what we can also see is, um, of what we can use the, the data gathered for is, um, is really heat maps to check on, on, on flows um, and, and see what, what type of routes the, the, the people on the job site are taking. Imagine that this is all sand and, and a lot of trucks would pass by. Yeah, you can really have an idea of, of where you might need a, a better job site route or something. And here I'm going to show you another video. And um, fleet as well is very interesting for our customers. For example, uh, a very used case is, is invoicing. We've heard some customer feedback where, um, where a customer really does not know whether um, the invoices he sent to its client is, is covering all of his machine movements. So what we can really see um, when using fleet is that we can um, we can see how many hours uh, a machine was working, um, if it's running uh, optimally. So he has a lot more data, so he has a lot more data as well to base his invoices upon. And another added value we can we've heard is that subcontractors drivers and. Um, can sometimes work for uh, two 
clients at the same time whilst um, being invoiced um, a full day for one customer. So he's actually getting paid double. So Fleet can be used to, um, to really check it and to, to use the data for optimization. All of these uh, three apps uh, or applications I showed you are part of a larger ecosystem. So I've only shown you three because they are most applicable for uh, geospatial things, but there are a lot more. So with this one, with the other apps, we can use the uh, data to analyze and to tackle administration purposes and then to cover the complete uh, job site process. A very important comment is that we're uh, not trying to, to replace people, but really uh, smart construction is, is into the helping um, phase. We're really aiming towards supporting our customers and to, um, yeah, to, to, to help them with, with solving their pains and uh, to work towards a complete digital transformation. So to, complete, to conclude my uh, presentation, um, construction industry is typically a very classical sector, but it's, it's mostly because there are so many value, uh, variables. Imagine that it's way easier to digitize in a, in a warehouse environment where every day is the same, doesn't, it doesn't rain, it, uh, it doesn't have sandy roads or anything. That's why um, construction has always been leaping uh, behind on, on, the, on the innovation side and the, and the digitalization. But that's where we aim to, um, to help and to bring an added value. This was my presentation, so thanks for joining. And if